What's good, peeps? Thanks always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. All right, let's do this. Uh, Q&A part 12. Thank you all so much for getting your questions in. Um, it was only a short window, but we still got, I think, around 100 questions. So again, thank you very much. Um, quick shout out to uh, G-Man Boxing. I don't know if you guys have subscribed to his channel. Uh, some good content there. Uh, knows his stuff about boxing. He has just reached 1,000 subscribers which is um, no mean feat, trust me. I remember when I first started and that was the aim, a thousand. So well done to him and fingers crossed he keeps going and kicks on. All right, let's get to the questions because we don't have much time. Uh, remember, it's about an hour long. Um, I actually don't know. I've not got a timer on, so I'm just going off my head. When I feel like I've spoken for too long, I just stop. And for some reason, I always kind of stop around an hour. All right, first question on email is from Charlie Warren. Charlie, you are the first question. Who is your favorite boxer of all time and who is it right now? Um, favorite boxer of all time. This, so this isn't the best boxer, but favorite boxer of all time is Nigel Benn. I always say that, but it's Nigel Benn or Prince Asim Hamid. I, I can't decide between the two, but I'm gonna say Nigel Benn. Um, favorite boxer right now is Terence Crawford. <laughs> Fucking love Terence Crawford. Um, Question here from Toby Narain. Um, fingers crossed I've pronounced your name correctly, dude. It says, hi, Ade. How do you think Canelo, Kovalev, Bivol and Yard would do against Berta Biev? Um, I didn't actually do a Berta Biev video because I was away and I forgot to talk about his win over um, Vodzdik, but I think he would smash all of those guys you just mentioned. Canelo is way too small for Berta Biev. Way too small. Um... Kovalev's like a bit wiry, so I can understand Canelo Kovalev, kind of. But um, Berta Biev is fucking tank looking. So he's almost like Canelo, but just bigger and stronger and hits harder. He would run through him. Um, Kovalev's at the end, he would run through him. I'm not uber excited about Bivol, if I'm honest with you. Um, I think uh, the number one fight was Berta Biev versus Vozdik. So Bivol, I think he would beat him. And Yard is a bit too inexperienced. Not saying that Yard can't eventually get to that level because I think Yard is actually pretty talented, but um, not now. Um, all right, next question is from James Rye. Um, again, it's via email. He says, hey, Eddie, I hope you're good. Not many people are mentioning this, but now that White's WBC shot has been pushed back to 2021, what are the chances he faces Usyk for the vacant WBO belt? Interesting. Um I just don't see Eddie Hearn doing it. I just don't see Eddie Hearn um, rolling the dice with, with two of his heavyweight charges. I don't see it yet. Um, you kind of do that if there's no avenues. And I think White's got so many avenues. And so is Usyk right now. Usyk could almost become his own star in America. So I don't think he does that yet. Plus Usyk's um, mandatory for AJ Ruiz, right? So Usyk could go that way, but for White, I'm not sure there are loads of good fights for White, you know, out there. I mean, I don't want to mention his name, but I'm going to right now. Jarrell Miller could be an option. Um, so many fights for White out there. So many. So, um, yeah, I don't think he'll roll the dice with Usyk versus White. Not yet. Not yet. All right, next question. TMG Boxing says, several years down the line when you reach retirement, do you intend to migrate somewhere or stay in the UK? No, I definitely intend to go back to Africa. Um, 100%. 100% Africa. I was always, I think as a kid, you always think of America, but fucking hell, America right now, no chance. So yeah, it would always be Nigeria. Um, fingers crossed that's sooner rather than later. Um, so I'm talking, I'm 38, so I would like to go there before I'm 50 and just um, have a chilled, relaxed life. Um, a few of my friends have actually moved out there permanently and um, I do get a bit jealous when I go and see them. Not that I don't like the UK. The UK has done a lot for me, but um, yeah, I think Africa um, eventually will, will be home. Um, so what's that? Five or six years max, hopefully. Uh, last question via email. This is from Harvey Ryder Belson. Says, who in your opinion is the best British amateur hopeful? Um, hopeful, I'm not sure. But the best amateur, I think, is Pat McCormack. Um, I don't know if you guys know about Pat McCormack at all. He's um, a young kid from Sunderland. I think he's about 24 or 25, but he's medaled 
in everything apart from the Olympic Games. So World Championship, I think, got a silver medal. European Games, a bronze and a silver. Commonwealth, I think, got gold, but hasn't medaled at the Olympics. So I think this will be his last chance at 2020, um, and then he'll probably turn pro. Um, I think he even won an award recently at the British Boxing whatever award show they do. Um, so he's highly thought of. So, uh, yeah, Pat McCormack, I think, is the best British um, amateur boxer. So, again, I don't know if that answers your question because you said hopeful, but fingers crossed it does. All right, let's get to um, YouTube. Oh, quite a few have come in. Uh, Curious Carrot says, what do you think of Diaz failing a USADA test? And do you think boxing needs USADA? Um, I don't know. Um, for those of you that don't know who he's talking about, Nate Diaz, um, mixed martial arts star, you should know him, fought Conor McGregor. Um, he was going to fight Jorge Masvidal in next weekend, but that fight looks like it's in jeopardy now because he has, or he's, um, his blood test or something has come back flagged for some sort of, um, I don't know what the drug was. Um, it's strange because... When you, in my head, I have an opinion of people that I think would not do anything wrong intentionally. And I think that's the key word here. He's one of those guys. Um, if you go on his Twitter page or his Instagram page, he's actually um, come out and said, look, he, he didn't have to tell people because the UFC were going to try and keep it under, under the rug, so to speak. But he, he has been flagged and he said, look, it's impossible. I don't even eat meat. I'm a vegan. We know that he smokes weed. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure, man. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. With regards to USADA coming to boxing, now nah, I, I prefer Vard, if I'm honest with you. Um, I think USADA is a bit of a, a, bit of a dodgy um, thing. I think USADA used to kind of be in boxing with Floyd Mayweather and no one trusted it because of their association with Floyd. Could be wrong, but I think that's the case. So I, I prefer Vard. Uh, Ryan Zez says, the real question is, when is Ade versus Hatman pay-per-view? You know, the funny thing is, I would love to sit down and talk with Hatman. You guys know I've started these interview uh, things that I've been doing. Um, and I would love to have Hatman on. But obviously, Hatman doesn't show his face. I'd have, I'd love to have Ultra Tech on again, but doesn't show his face. These guys are quite outspoken, and that's what I like. Um, so, I don't know, man. I'd like for him to, to come down and and like have a conversation about boxing but who knows if it's going to happen um xa gregory says would you do a sit down chat with t and booth like your ones with umar and tunde um i thought about it but i, I nah probably not if i'm honest with you just because i have um heard that it's a bit of a character remember i had umar on and umar i asked umar the question and he said it's kind of not real so i was like mm, um it'd be weird to kind of chat with someone off camera and then press the record button and they kind of switch their kind of uh, persona on camera. So, yeah, not too sure. Sunny Singh says, I forgot to add, I and I'm sure others do appreciate what you're doing uh, with the interacting. Uh, you're a stand-up guy and I hope you get the gig. Thanks a lot, brother. Um, he's referring to, I recently went to a Sky Sports interview a couple of days ago, so fingers crossed I get it. Um, I don't know what that would mean for some of the stuff I say about Sky Sports and Matchroom on this channel. Interesting, right? Interesting. Uh, Callum Gallagher says, if Canelo beats Kovalev, do you think he will stay at 175 or do you think he will return to 160? Um, I don't think he's staying at 175. I mean, he doesn't want any about Bert to be able to He doesn't want that work. Um, he might look at Bivol as an option because Bivol says he can make 168. So Bivol's a smaller guy. But um, I, I think he'll go to 168. I think there, there are some fights at 168. There are still some fights at 160. Uh, maybe not GGG and Derevchenko, but there's definitely Charlo. There's definitely um, Dimitris Andrade. It'll be good to see how Eubank does against um, Kobarov. So um, there are fights out there. Did I say that guy's name correct? I think I did. Uh, Spadge Caesars Palace says, who do you think will be the UK world champions in five years' time? Five years' time. It's a good question. Um, I want to say Josh Taylor, but I do think Josh Taylor is going to move to 147, and 147 is a completely different proposition. He's big, I think we can see that with the way and with progress, but uh, there's no. I don't even know how old Josh Taylor is. 
there's not many prospects. Let's be honest. I mean, I know um, I could probably think of some as the video goes on, but there ain't that many. I mean, there ain't that many. I, I just mentioned a guy earlier in the video who's an amateur now that's doing very good things in the amateur ranks, and that's Pat McCormack. So he's not even turned pro, but I mean, what he's doing as an amateur. Actually, there is one guy that's with Dave Coldwell now who, again, very good amateur. I can't remember his name on the top of my head. But I don't think it's anyone right now that's um, in the early stages of being a pro. I think Boatsy might, but not convinced yet either. So um, I'm not sure. I'll probably think of a name as we go on. Uh, what is the dullest boxing match you've seen live? Um, Chamberlain fucking Akoli. Fuck yeah, now bring out your pillows. I'll tell you another one, though, that wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. The build-up was electric, and that was uh, Eubank Saunders. Well, that would be good, and that turned out to be crap. Um, TT says, um, in a round robin of Prince Nassim, Lomachenko, and Pacquiao, 126, who would come out on top? Mm. Some good names there, boy. Um, I'm going to say Loma. And the reason I say that is because He's just so fundamentally sound. The other guys are phenomenal. I mean, Prince Nassim Hamid, one of my favorite fighters, explosive. Pacquiao, explosive and fast. But they both are quite erratic as well. I mean, Prince Nassim, we saw that against Barrera. When he stepped up against someone fundamentally sound, someone that just is very good with their basics but has a bit extra, he kind of got found out a bit. Nothing wrong with that. We're talking Barrera. Pacquiao... Um, in his fights against someone very fundamentally sound in Marquez, always had problems. Uh, Loma is very fundamentally sound. So I'm going to go Loma. Um, Rasaidi uh, Jasani says, who you got between Prime Carl the Cobra Froch and Callum Smith? Stop it, Jasani. Um, Cobra Froch would destroy him. Not high on Callum Smith at all. Um, so maybe I'm a bit, a bit biased there because I do like Carl Froch, but yeah. Nope, nope, nope. IMPK13 says, if you had children, would you allow, encourage them to get into boxing? No, 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 no. Um, yes, you can go to the local boxing gym and you can maybe hit the bags and hit the pads and do some skipping and get into great shape. I wouldn't even, I'd even be scared of them sparring. I'm not even joking. I mean, we all send the dangers. I mean, look at Patrick Day uh, last week, died. I mean, come on, no, no chance. No chance, mate. Fruit Boy says, in the next three years, which prospect, if any, in brackets, do you think will reach world championship status? I've just added the status, but he didn't say that. But I thought I'd say that. Um, are we talking what country? Are we talking across the world? Or I'm guessing you might be talking UK. Um, UK. I think I've just talked about this. I mean, help me out here, guys. I don't know. I mean, who in the UK coming through is impressing you? A lot of the guys that we thought might step up and do good things that we were hearing about. So last year, for example, in the, or the early part of last year, Ritson was a name everyone was talking about. Then he got beat. And now it's like people are looking at Ritson as just being British or European level. Josh Kelly, we don't know what's going on with him. Um, Anthony Fowler got beat by Scott Fitzgerald and then kind of had a tougher fight than I thought he would have against Brian Rose. These were all considered prospects last year. Not sure. Not sure, people. Patrick Doyle says, who's your top 10 pound for pound of all time? Dude, bloody hell, it's a tough one. I'm not joking. That's almost too tough to answer. It's too tough to answer. Um, man, that's a fucking tough question. You know what the funny thing is about answering that question? I'm probably not even going to answer it here right now because I can't think off the top of my head. But people always mention names of fighters that they never saw fight, right? Just because... For some reason, they're always in the top 10. Like, for example, I never saw Sugar Ray Robinson fight. I've seen some clips, but never saw him fight, right? And even the clips I saw are not um, convincing. But just because he's always there, people just automatically put him in. Um, so my top 10 would be a bit different. I'd, I'd like to do a top 10 of fighters that I've seen, like a big catalogue of their fights. Not just fighters that, um, just because, I don't know, um, someone, like an historian puts them in, they've all automatically got to be in. So I'm going to do that top 10 and I'm going to do a video on it. Thanks for um, telling me this. Um, Elliot McCollum says, is Fedor Emilienko the MMA heavyweight goat? Um, 
is Fedor the GOAT. Yes and no. The reason I say no is because a lot of these fights, even though of recent he's been in Strike Force and Bellator, I know my mixed martial arts people, um, a lot of these fights were in Pride, right? And I'm hearing a few dodgy things about Pride. I think even Rampage Jackson, who he's actually fighting next, said that a lot of the Pride stuff was um, um, fixed. I mean, don't get me wrong, still could have ran through a lot of them, but a lot of it was fixed. At the peak of his powers, it would have been good for him to be in the UFC. At the peak, where all the best were. Um, so if he isn't the GOAT, he's definitely top three. Um, it'll be between him, Kane, Velasquez, and Stipe, right? Stipe has had the longest winning run uh, as heavyweight champion. So um, those will be my top three. Um, Mr. KWXBen 1966 says, tell the truth. Do you really read the questions that come in or do you do a bit of read and choose? Are we listening? That answered your question, brother. Um, um, Malnourished Matty, that name. How underrated was Berta Biev until his last performance? I think a bit underrated. I think a lot of people had Vozdik winning that one. I think a lot of people, because of this Ukrainian association with Usyk and Loma, I think everyone thought that that was him. Um, he was never a fighter like that. So I think he was a bit underrated. Um, and maybe because he got put down by Callum Johnson. He didn't get put down. His legs were fucking wobbly. Um, but I think he showed everyone just how good he is. Um, that guy, you know what it is? You know, you get some guys, and I think someone actually said this on Twitter. So I'm, I'm stealing a bit of what they said. But you get some guys that um, look strong, but um, can't punch. And you get some guys that, don't look strong, but can punch. Like Deontay Wilder, for example, he doesn't, I mean, I mean, look, if you were on a street, this is very random, and you was asked to pick between Wilder and Joshua, who can punch the hardest, you're gonna go Joshua. Deontay Wilder doesn't look like he can punch, but that fucking guy hits you if, you know what I mean? And you get some guys, like Kovalev, for example, get another one that doesn't look like he's got power, and then bang, you're knocked out. But to be able, it looks like he can punch and can punch. It's a fucking machine, man. He's a machine. Um, Mr. KWX Ben 1966 says, do all boxing fans need serious psychiatric help? How can we follow a sport that is so lacking in any rules and integrity? My man, you are so correct. Um, but let's be honest. Boxing was built um, by the mafia. <laughs> That's what it was built by. So how can we be so shocked? Um, it's just one of those things, right? It's one of those things. We don't like... Um, necessarily, you know, it is we have to try and separate ourselves from all the crap, all the sanctioning bodies, and just enjoy the fighters and the fights. And I think they give us enough to enjoy. Um, funny shit says, Do you think Yard can hang with the current big boys of the 175 pound division? Uh, Vosdik, Bertibiev, etc. Yeah, I do. Maybe not Bertibiev, I think he's um, a step away from everyone now, but I do think Yard can hang. I think we saw that. I know he didn't, um, he didn't really win a round apart from maybe one round against Kovler, but I think we all saw enough in that fight to say that give him a couple more fights, um, a few more improvements, like a bit of better foot movement and maybe using his jab, he does have a jab, um, he can definitely hang. And I think those are things you can improve, right? Um, Abby Skoll says, Fultz and Canelo potentially fighting Bertabiev. Death. Death. He would never, ever fight Bertabiev. In fact, he'll probably wait until Bert Bertabiev is 34. He'll probably wait until he's like 40. Um, Dr. Johnson says, who wins Calzaghe Award at 168 pounds? I feel like I get this question every Q&A and every Q&A I duck the answer, but I'm not going to duck the answer this time. I'm going to say Joe Calzaghe beats Andre Ward. Um, oh, I don't know. Adrian Harvey says, thanks at eight. What do you think about Bertabiev versus Canelo? Say maybe he gets past the crusher. Uh, kind of just answer this one, Adrian. Um, I think um, Bertabiev would run through him like a hot knife through butter. I don't think there's anything Canelo could do to keep Bertabiev off. Nothing. I mean, even Vosdit was trying everything, and that man was just walking through everything. Nah. Uh, Canelo would get crushed. Crushed to death. I think Bertabiev must be the biggest um, light heavyweight there is. Right? And um, now you get crushed to death. Crushed to death, mate. Um, Connor Gleason says, Who do you think is our best amateur prospect? I just answered that one, Connor. Um, Pat McCormack um, from Sunderland, young kid um, who's won a medal everywhere apart from the Olympic Games. Um, I'm sure he's going to go for the Olympics 2020, so that's his last chance. Um, 
Boxer says, you've done a best biscuit video. How about a best chocolate bar and crisp? Don't let us down, Ada. You know what? I might have to do one. Might have to do a best chocolate bar and crisp. Crisp is an interesting one, isn't it? Crisp is an interesting one. There's loads of crisps. Hmm. Best chocolate bar. In my head, I'm already thinking of the best one. I mean, some good ones, right? Yorkie. Do they even still sell Yorkies? It's fucking just pure, solid chocolate. No crap, no extra. Boom. And Snickers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or, if you're of a certain age, it used to be called Marathon. By the way, see, you've got me started now. How fucking small are the chocolate bars nowadays? Like, I, like, and it's not even a joke. You know, the double pack Snickers you can get. So it's like got two in there. That isn't far off what a marathon used to be like. Fucking embarrassing. Um, Eddie Eagle says, for a million pound, you have to rap any two-pack song. Oh, but you can't mess up. One word or you lose. What song you're picking? Damn, that's a tough one. Hellraiser. I think I could go word for word with Hellraiser. I was just about to do it, which is why I started. I ain't going to do it. Hellraiser. I think. Tough question. Um, <laughs> the next question. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> good question, son. Uh, Boxing Monkey says, <laughs> Big Hairy Bush or Shaven Haven? Uh, Shaven Haven. Shaven Haven. Don't mind a bit of hair now. Sorry, move on. Next question. Uh, Sky Sports could be watching this. Uh, HB says, who do you think would win out of Spence versus Lara and Crawford versus Lara at £154? Oh, okay. I think Crawford's maxed out at 147. Um, and what Crawford has in terms of skill set, I think Lara's got it. Maybe not this Lara. This Lara's obviously been in a few tough fights, but Lara's extremely skillful, extremely, um, or was extremely skillful. So I think he could match Crawford skill for skill personally. I really do think that. There was a time I actually thought Lara could beat Mayweather. I know that sounds stupid now, but there was a time. Um, so I think Spence would probably do better just because of the size thing. Even though Spence uh, is probably the same size as Lara. And I think Lara is better than Spence in terms of boxing ability. Um, I keep saying that, but I mean the old Lara. I'm not quite sure about this guy now. So I wouldn't fancy any of them, if I'm honest with you. But I would probably give the edge to Spence. Um... Um, Aladad Khan says, which of the current 147 pounders do you think Amir Khan can beat? Um, pff, no one in the top 10. And that's being serious, by the way. No one in the top 10. Like, where do you have Ugas? Where do you have him? He's probably around seven or eight. Amir Khan ain't beating him. I'll tell you that now, not beating him. Um, no. Nah. Can you imagine what Sean Porter... M imagine if the Sean Porter that turned up against Errol Spence and lost does to Amir Khan, that kind of rushing, and you haven't got the power to keep him off. Um, it's going to be tough for Amir Khan to, to really, if he is really serious about fighting and continually fighting, um, it's going to be tough to match him because um, there are, there's someone maybe in and around the top 20 that could beat him. Truth. Big C says, who's your favourite fighter from every weight class? Um, if not every weight class, um, flyweight. Uh, flyweight... Um, What's that guy's name that beat Charlie Edwards? That beat Andrew Selby as well. Just like him. Um, Julio Martinez. Julio Martinez. Um, featherweight, Josh Warrington. I'm going to go Josh Warrington. I know there are other better ones than him, but I mean, what he's done in the last year, year and a half, two years is impressive because no one expected it. Um, super lightweight. Um, Josh Taylor. Uh, welterweight. Uh, Terence Crawford, Super Middle, Khalid Plant, Light Heavy, Butter BF. Um, Butter BF. Carlos Marquez says, do you think Spence will ever be the same? Um, I do. I mean, just because we're hearing it's only a couple of lacerations and a few broken teeth. In fact, I think we could see a better Spence now. I do think that sometimes you need a wake-up call. And I said this immediately after I heard about the accident. And I heard that it was uh, a DUI, so driving under influence. Um, this would mean he might now just cut out all that crap. And um, if he cuts out all the crap, it can only benefit his career, right? So we could see a more focused and determined Errol Spence now, which is a scary thought. Um, 
Avi Skoll says, Addy, can you do a live reaction to the very big fights such as AJ versus Ruiz and Wilder versus Fury? Well, we can also ask you questions in the live chat. That's kind of what I want to do. Um, it, yeah, I'm going to do it. Basically, I'm going to do it. Um, I've actually, though, applied for um, press accreditation for AJ versus Ruiz. I'm guessing we're going to find out in a few days if I've got it or not. I'm not sure. But um, I do want to get out there. I just, I just want to get out to a big fight and experience. I've been talking about going to these fights. And every time Matchroom send through an application for press accreditation, I don't apply. So, you know, I'm just going to apply for this one and see what happens. So if I'm out there, um, you know, I'm going to do as many videos as possible ringside. So um, we'll see. Uh, Connor Gleason says, who wins? Bertabia versus Callum Smith. Uh, Bertabia by destruction. Um, Noonan S says, will Dylan White ever get a title shot? He had his opportunities. Pardon me, sorry. He had his opportunity, right? I mean, there was an opportunity to fight AJ Wembley Stadium. Let's not forget that, people. Um, and he moaned about what was in the rematch clause. Uh, someone else took the opportunity and won all the belts. So um, as much as he does moan about the WBC, and I, I get that, um, there are other avenues. You can fight for other governing bodies and you got an opportunity that he just didn't take. Um, Dubois says, do you think there will be a Nigerian undisputed champion in the near future? Um, can never say never. Um, I mean, look at the UFC right now. I don't know if you're a UFC fan. I mean, we have two champions in the UFC uh, in um, Israel Adesanya and Kamara Usman. Um, you never would have thought that. So you can never say never, but it doesn't look like there's anyone um, on the horizon. But undisputed is, I mean, you're talking winning all the belts. So I'm going to say you can never say never, but very, very unlikely. Um, KS says, any tips on overcoming the fear or anxiety of finally shaving your head bald? My hairline is receding. It's time for me to, to bite the bullet. I'm quite lucky that my head shape ain't fucked up. It's not that bad, right? Before anyone disses. Um, but yeah, you know, the worst thing is, the worst thing isn't shaving it. Shaving is fine. The worst thing is when you shave it and it starts to grow back. Because I don't like constantly shaving it because I think it irritates your skin or irritates your hair. Um, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you are joining that club very soon, my friend, if not already there. Um, Mango's Free says, thoughts on Joke of the Movie if you saw, haven't seen it yet, but I fucking can't wait to see it. I might go and see it tomorrow because I am desperate to see it. But what I like, I don't like going to the cinema when I know it's going to be packed. So I, I, I'm the kind of person, which is, I don't know, sad or, or smart. I kind of like to go to the cinema and watch a big film a couple of weeks after when it starts to die down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to watch it. If not this weekend, next weekend. Um, Kashif POV says, Teal versus Gastelum, who you got? I'm going for Gastelum. I'm, I think this is a tough matchup. Teal's first fight at middleweight and he fights Gastelum. I mean, Gastelum just works and works and works. I mean, you saw that fight of Israel Adesanya and Teal's coming off a couple of bad results, right? A couple of bad results. So um, I, I'm going Gastelum. Um, who do you think will cause Adesanya the most problems? Um, who have you got? Okay. All right. No, sorry. Uh, who do you think will cause Adesanya the most problems? I think the guy he's fighting next, I can't remember the guy's name. That Brazilian, the stocky one, Costa. Costa's not going to be easy. I mean, you saw the fight with Costa and Yoel Romero. That ain't going to be easy. Um, all right. Another question says, uh, what do you think of Lomachenko apparently saying he would fight Inoue if Inoue moved up three divisions? Poor. Poor. I hate that. I re really do hate that. I mean, I didn't even like Loma. And look, I understand this. When Rigo jumped up a couple of divisions, they could have met in the middle. I mean, for for as good as Loma is, why can't you just go down? Or why didn't he go down to one? Was it 126 or 130? I can't remember, but it could have gone down. So yeah, no. Nah. Um, he also says, good work the channel, brother. Hope you get the Sky Sports job. So do I. Just because I um, wouldn't mind a bit of that money, boy. Um, who is the most glass chin boxer in history? Don't know. It's probably going to be someone we never know. Right? Let's be honest. I mean, if they're that glass chin, they wouldn't have got very far. Football King says, what do you think about Zufa Boxing's first fighter, Cody Crowley? What, they've started signing boxers already? Didn't even know that. Didn't even know that. For those of you that don't know um, who Cody Crowley is, um, he's a Canadian boxer. Um, I only know this because there was some talk about him versus Kell Rook at 154 pounds. He's unbeaten as well, um, but not fought out of Canada yet, so I don't know how good he is. 
Um, do you think Dana White will sign other big names in boxing or just prospects? When you say other big names, are you saying that Cody Crowley's a big name? Because I don't consider him a big name. I think he'll sign guys like that. So unbeaten guys, guys that might have a bit of a fan base. But in terms of big money signings, like what the zone kind of did, not happening. Jake Atkins says, recently on a match from Italy show, we saw fighters notified halfway through the fights of the judges' scorecards at the time. Do you think this would be a welcome addition to high-level boxing? It certainly changed the pace of matchups where one fighter feels he's being robbed or is further ahead than he, is, than he anticipated. Love the videos. Yeah, I, I've actually commentated on fights where this has happened. I'm not, I'm not too big a fan of it. I almost like the suspense. I get it um, that it could make a fight that thinks he's uh, winning or losing change, their, uh, change the way in which they're fighting, but I'm not a big fan of it. Not a big fan of it. They call it open scoring. Don't know if I like it or not. Um, Dr. Johnson says, what next for Josh Warrington? I mean, he said, look, bring on anyone. Uh, Shakur Stevenson fights Joet Gonzalez. I don't know when this is going to come out. Probably the fight might happen after this video. Um, if Shakur Stevenson wins that, which is a belt, remember he's fighting for Oscar Valdez's vacant belt, then a unification could happen and it would be a big unification. I wouldn't rule out Josh Warrington winning that one. Um, I, I wouldn't, honestly. Um, Global Frank 95 uh, super Series, £135. I like how he's actually put the dates here as well. 1977, Roberto Duran versus 2009, Edwin Valero. Uh, this Valero story is so sad. Um, he could have been something, right? I don't know if you guys know the story, but killed his wife. I think killed his wife and kid, then killed himself. Um, but one hell of a fucking fight. A crazy knockout record. And, I mean, there is some sparring footage of him versus Eric Morales, and he wobbles Morales a lot. Um, but you're talking about Roberto Duran there. So I'd have to favour Duran, but Valero could put him to sleep any time, but um, Duran. 2005, Floyd Mayweather versus 1988, Julio Cesar Chavez. Um, I'm going to go 05 Floyd, just because, in my head, I've always said that um, Floyd at 135 was the best version of Floyd. So I'm, I'm, the best version of Floyd, I, I think, beats the best version of Chavez. That's what I think. But then you're talking about that Floyd versus Duran, and that is a fucking fight. I'm gonna go Duran, but that would be, you know, what that reminds me of that would that remind that fight there. And it's just different, but that kind of reminds me of how good a fight or how much I really wanted to see Floyd versus Pac-Man after Floyd beat Cotto. I mean, pff, oh, fucking boxing. Um, Connor Gleason says, who wins, Haney or Campbell? I am going to lean towards Haney just, just because I think he could be a bit special. But um, I think we all saw that Campbell kind of done well against um, Linares and done well against Loma. Um, we haven't seen Haney with anyone really yet. Um, I know people might say, is it Abdullayev that he fought? He was ranked number two, but who's that? Um, CJPA says, if you could go back and watch any fight from the past at ringside, what would it be? Mine would be Gatti versus Ward. You know what mine would be? I've changed so many times on this. Initially, it was Hagler Hearns, but I think I'd love to be ringside for when Mike Tyson lost just to hear what was going on with, with commentators and just the manicness of it, is that a word? Like the craziness of him losing, it must have just been madness because he was literally fucking Superman. So that would have been crazy. Um, Jamstar says, do you think White should vacate his WBC interim title and focus on the WBO? If the WBO title becomes vacant and is ordered to fight Usyk, who wins and how? The latter part, I think, would be a great fight and I wouldn't, I would favour Usyk just, just in that fight. Um, Dylan White is ferocious, mate, and we'll just, he could just walk through Usyk, we don't know. Um, and I do think he should just fuck off the WBC, if I want to say. I don't know why he, just fuck him off. Um, they obviously don't want to give him the shot. I mean, they're talking about 2021 now, just tell him to fuck off. Uh, pardon my French. Jordan Sue says, hey man, just wanted to say good luck with the Sky Sports gig. Dude, good luck. Um, if you get it, what will that mean for your channel? The channel lasts forever. This, I'm not joking. For me, this is more important than any gig. I, I like, 
If Sky Sports were to tell me, I'm not even playing, by the way, that I can't do this no more, I wouldn't take the gig. I swear down. I, I enjoy it. Actually, I don't know about that. No, I, I think I would. I think I would. But I'd have to probably tone it down a bit because, let's be honest, um, I do diss a lot of the Sky Sports stuff. So I'd have to, I'd have to find a mature way of still doing it because I have to still do it. There's no doubt about it. Um, what's he got here? Uh, Mark Whitaker says, here's a question. Hope it is a question. Prime versus Prime. Um, Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Thomas the Hitman Hearns at welterweight and light middle. I think um, I think Thomas Hearns would beat him. I, I, I just think um, he's too long. He can punch too hard. Um, he can punch in bunches. He's got fast hands. Um, I think he would beat. I actually genuinely believe he would beat Floyd, which is strange, right? I, I, no, it's not strange at all, actually. I just think he would have been. Um, you know, you've said it as well. You've said you would have him winning both. Who? Yeah, Hans. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, Richard Michael says, Add a first time asking a question. Uh, I see G-Man videos. Well done, G-Man. And it said, boycott the WBC. Is it time that happens? Um, I think so. I said it. I said they should be deleted. But I, I, I think... It takes for a world champion of note to put their belt in a bin. I don't know if you, I don't know how old you are, but I remember when Riddick Bowe done it. I think he was supposed to fight Lewis, and he just put their belt in the bin. Um, just dump their belts, dump them. But obviously, fighters won't do that. I understand why. Stephen Tokley says, if you had to make a UFC card with a fight from each weight class, only three title fights allowed, what would it be? Oh, tough question. Tough question to even think of. But I was actually thinking about the UFC recently because John Jones, sorry, this is not even answering your question, but let's talk UFC. John Jones, I think, finally said he wants to go to heavyweight. Um, I think in his head, he wants to fight the winner of Stipe versus DC. I want to see him versus Ngana. He's got a like, if he, for me, he's already the GOAT anyway. I think John Jones is the GOAT. If he beats Ngano, that fucking monster, then he's doubly the GOAT. But that's the fight I want to see, um, which doesn't even answer your question. Sorry, dude. Uh, Leo Bryan says, Addy, your thoughts on Wilder versus Usyk? Obviously, these guys have been going back and forth. Well, I say back and forth. They've had a couple of words. Um, I can understand how Usyk looks at Wilder and thinks, I can beat you. Wilder isn't the biggest of the heavyweights. Yes, he's tall, but he's very wiry. Um, if he catches Usyk, and I think Usyk's fully aware of this, he's dead. But I think Usyk thinks your boxing ability is awful. And I can just see it coming like in slow-mo and I'll just outbox you and um, beat you quite comfortably. I can understand why he sees that. So um, good fight. Good fight if it happens. Ain't never going to happen. Uh, Mini Max Boxing says, a bigger puncher, Tyson or Foreman? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I, hmm. I want to say Foreman. I'm going to say Foreman. Um, I mean, Foreman lifted up Joe Frazier. He lifted him up. It was like a Rocky movie. He punched him and his legs, both legs came off the canvas. Fucking hell, that's some power there, dude. Uh, Baxter says, when you break into boxing, what would your ideal job be? Commentator, TV analyst, news reporter for a top channel or work as a promoter? I've kind of done, um, I'm not quite sure if you know Baxter, but I've done the commentating for Fox Sports in Africa. I've done TV analyst for Fox Sports. I've done the news reporter job. Um, obviously not a promoter. I would, I think the best thing is commentator. I think commentator is fantastic. Um, yeah, it's great because you almost, or well, I do anyway, I talk like a fan when I commentate, which isn't the best, but I mean, to see an action closer, I mean, to watch it at home on TV is good, but to be that close to the ring where the sweat and blood is coming on you, fucking amazing. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Ryan Z said, honestly, in his prime, would Mike Tyson stand up to the heavyweight giants of today, such as Joshua Wilder, Fury and the Klitschko's? Would Mike be able to deal with the size? It's a good question. Honestly, as much as everyone says, oh, immediately, yes, 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 of course he would. Um, we don't know. I mean, these guys are huge, huge. It's funny because, you know, the likes of Foreman, I was, I was actually checking this out, and even Frank Bruno, they're considered big, right? Or were considered big. Frank was considered big for his time, so was Foreman. Foreman's 6'3". <laughs> now check it out. I think Foreman was 6'3", 6'4". These guys are 6'8", some of them. 6'7". 6'9". It's it's, I mean, how do you... Tyson was 5'11". Don't get me wrong. In my head, I still think peak Tyson smashes all of them. But, I mean, size 
is a big thing. I'm trying to think, who's the tallest person Tyson fought? I mean, I'm sure he fought some tall guys in his day, but a tall kind of elite fighter was probably Razor Ruddock, who was very tough. And that was two of, I think they had two fights, didn't they? Two tough fights for Tyson. F.U. Sauer says, did you watch Fuzudi's last fight? This is a fighter in South Africa. Uh, he lost to Rakimov and it was quite devastating, but I'd like your takeaway from it. He was winning the fight. He was winning the fight. Rakimov just had a bit more power, but there is obviously an appeal going because I think Rakimov in his corner had smelling salts, which is illegal. We're not supposed to have that in the corner. That wakes you up, right? <laughs> it's illegal. So um, I think it's going to be a no contest, but the damage has been done now. So um, it's a shame, but it should be turned. I think it will be overturned to a no contest. Um, I ate Snickers for breakfast and what? Says, is Mike Tyson the best heavyweight ever on his day? And do you think Marciano is overrated? Personally, I think he's massively underrated. Cheers, buddy. I don't know too much about Rocky Marciano. I'm not going to be one of those guys that just go on to Wikipedia and look at someone's record and say, yeah, I know everything about them. I don't. Um, but Mike Tyson isn't the best heavyweight ever on his day. I'm, I'm, I can't. When a guy called Muhammad Ali is around, I just can't accept that. I can't. Especially not even, not even Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay. That guy. <sighs> Frightening. Another question from I Eat Snickers for Breakfast and What? Says, all right, Ade, love the show, mate. First question. You say you listen to rap. Do you listen to any grime? And if so, who's your favourite artist? Um, what is grime, though? I don't even know how, like, how, how do you kind of put artist in the grime category um dave would probably be one i listen to but it, would you class him as grime um i'm a bit old school though so i listen to kind of guys around my era so that would be like gets and kano you know what i mean and maybe because they're from east london as well wiley etc bean queen says what did you study at nottingham university i didn't go to nottingham Un oh because of the top um yeah i didn't go um i actually stole it from someone i don't even know who it was i stole it from now um, yeah, so I didn't go Nottingham. Um, XXXXX Fletch XXXXX1 says, What's your best chocolate bar and ice cream? Ice cream, easy. Huggen Dars, strawberry cheesecake. Chocolate bar. Don't eat many chocolate bars, but if I do, you know, what is that? I, I, okay, we're getting too deep with this now, but I did used to love Twirl. Don't know why I used to love Twirl. Um, but I'm thinking that if I do go into a shop and I crave a chocolate bar, it's between Kit Kat and Snickers. We need to do a video on this. We need to do a video. Um, James Paul says, both presently and historically, which fighter do you think has the most deluded, fanatic fanboys? For me, at present, it would be Deontay Wilder and historically Mike Tyson. That's interesting. That is interesting, especially the Mike Tyson bit. Um, just because... I think a lot of people grew up with Mike Tyson, especially if you're a certain age group, right? And automatically, everyone just assumed he was the best heavyweight ever. And I think history tells us that isn't the case. Um, for me, Amir Khan. <laughs> I think Amir Khan has the most... I, I can't even put an Amir Khan video out without getting fucking stick. It, it, it gets silly. It gets silly sometimes. It, all, it, it also turns to race wars. And that's when it, you've just gone too far for me. He left the building. Um, uh, Ty Z H D says, how do you think Dillian White should move forward if he's cleared of the drug accusations? Uh, should he try to enforce his mandatory fight through legal actions? Should he take easy fights until he gets his title shot? Or should he continue to take risky fights? Good question. Um, at this point, though, be honest. I mean, if he is cleared... I mean, I, just, I think it's too late to even be clear, if I'm honest with you. I think you, you let, let it go so long. So, yeah, that's that part. Um, with regards to the, the actual question itself, though, um, I think he actually should take legal action. I think he really should try and enforce his situation. Take legal action against these WBC, we be crooks organisation. He should do that. Um, yeah, he should. With regards to risky fights... I mean, what risky fights are we talking about? Oscar Rivas? Because I think that's the only one. I mean, before that, then again, oh shit, no, he fought Joseph Parker as well. I don't think Derek Chisora is that risky. So yeah, he's had a couple of risky fights. But um, I think what he really should do, and I'm going around in circles here, I think he should just fight for another organisation. Go that way. Go that route. Do that. It's not like there's only one organisation. Go and try the other three. Finbar White says, do you think Saudi money will hurt boxing and others' reputations? 
Um, not really, if I'm honest with you. I, I don't think so. Um, I think, look, more money in boxing is better, right? Surely. No? I don't know. don't think so. Um, also, do you think there's any point in drug testing as bans are so small now it's a disgrace? Yeah, I, no, I don't think there is any point anymore. I, I, I really don't. Um, and boxing so weird um, because... I mean, only the very, very top, like for example, the WBC box, World Boxing Clean Program system only test um, the top 15 in whatever sort of um, division. So what about number 16? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's just too fractured. It's too fractured. Let them all do what they want to do. I've had enough of talking about drugs in boxing, honestly. Lionel Kashida says, Ade, uh, my second question was, how can I get into boxing as an interviewer like boxing social, IFL TV, behind the gloves. I'm from West London. I'm just interested in the sport of boxing, that's all. Dude, it's actually um, very, very easy. Um, and I'm not even discrediting those guys. I mean, it's easy in the sense that all you need really is a phone. I mean, if you want to get started that way, I mean, yes, you can get all the fancy equipment, but all you need is a phone and you need to go to boxing um, events, right? Press conferences are free to get into and just catch the boxers. You will go to a press conference, especially for a big fight, and you'll have about 30 opportunities to interview people. And what I mean, what I mean by that is that there will at least be 30 either former boxers, current boxers, promoters there to interview. That's it. It's that simple. Um, and if you want to know when the press conferences are, just follow Eddie... Eddie Hearn on Twitter or Frank Warren on Twitter. And they tell you, they kind of reset, they say it. They say, um, press conference open to the public, anyone welcome. That's your opportunity. And once they start to see who you are, then you'll get press accreditation to the real fights. Not that difficult. Aya says, do you notice a lot of the boxing community on Twitter seem to thrive and get a thrill out of being negative and complaining nonstop about the sport? Um, yeah, I'm like that as well. But you kind of have to understand why we're so frustrated with the sport right we're frustrated when we don't get the fights we want to see um for example i mean you can't even see or vision on the horizon crawford versus spence so you can understand why we would get frustrated right um i want to see um i don't know andrade versus canelo that's why we fucking get so frustrated because we simply don't get what we want. We wanted Joshua versus Wilder for two years. <laughs> you know, I want Fury Joshua. So you can get it. You fully understand. Mr. KWXBed 1966 says, the most important question, how are you going to deal with the commute into your new work offices? Remember, you had become one of us, i.e. getting an overground tube for a relatively short journey with us all like sardines on trains delayed by signal failures. Not, yeah. Even when I went to the interview, and their office is in Austerley, I'm in Stratford. I'm not joking, it's about 30 stops. I had to do Central Line to Holborn, Piccadilly Line to Austerley. Still want the job though. Old School 3000 says, you referenced Riddick Bowe been in the WBC belt. Do you think this was the beginning of the ducking culture? For me, it created a culture of picking paths through divisions. Interesting, interesting. Um... Maybe, maybe. I don't know if there was anything like that before. Um, I don't necessarily think Riddick Bowe was scared of Lennox Lewis. Um, I think that's the reason he put the bin in the belt. Um, this is a guy that had wars with um, Evander Holyfield, etc. I just think he wanted more money, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong. Um, but you're right. I think boxers now have become so powerful, it's scary. I, I don't remember this power before. I don't remember it. Um, or maybe it's because we were so young back then and there was no social media. But boxers seem to have come very powerful, which could be a good thing. It's just that right now, and I don't blame them, the majority of boxers are picking the easier option for the most money. How can you blame them? Right, you can't blame them for that. JT says, how did you start lifting weights? Did you have a friend, a personal trainer, or did you do it by yourself? Also, do you have any tips for anyone starting out to lift weights? Um, myself if I'm honest with you in fact I actually had a am I even that big I don't think so I've got a decent shape I guess um I just had a couple of dumbbells from Argos in the house 
Um, what I would advise, and I've seen so many people in the gym, especially young kids, you see them on the protein shakes and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, just fucking eat. Like, just eat and don't rush. I don't know what you're trying to do. It's almost like you want to go from, I don't know, fucking nine stone to Hulk Hogan in a couple of days. Just take your time, enjoy it. Um, but stay away from the naughty stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Fruit Boy says, what do you think of the Welsh prospects in Cordina and Liam Williams? Uh, do you think they have what it takes to push um, the elite level champions or just stay on the fringes? I like Cordina. I do like Joe Cordina. There's his name, Joe Cordina. Uh, Liam Williams, I like as well, but we've seen him against Liam Smith, who I don't think is elite. I know Liam Smith was a world champion and he's been beaten. So I don't know where his ceiling is. I do think he looks better at 160 than 154 pounds, so we'll see. I don't think he, I wouldn't say he's a prospect though anymore. Um, also, he says uh, there's a rumour going that Loma versus Monster is the super fight. Um, what do you think of it? Who takes it? Not a super fight. They're what? what? They're like two or three weight classes apart. It's never going to happen. Never. And I'd, I'd actually be embarrassed for Loma if that happens because Loma shouldn't even be looking at that. I know Loma's small for 135 pounds, but Inoue's actually come up as well. So Inoue's way smaller than Loma. So, you know, I wouldn't fancy it. Just had a fucking nightmare. I don't know if um, the camera setting looks a bit different or the angle looks a bit different. But um, I was talking for all of about 20 minutes and just realised I didn't press the record button. Don't know, I don't even know how I just realised. I thought, let me just go and check the time on the phone. It wasn't recording. So let's go again. Henry999 says, Ade, with multiple deaths uh, in 2009 in the sport of boxing, where do you see the sport going regarding fighters' safety? Should rounds be shorter? Should there be a highly qualified independent body? At ringside, absolutely. With the ability to pull the fight if they feel necessary, should refs have a higher level of training regarding the signs and symptoms of brain damage? The deaths of Patrick Day, sorry, the death of Patrick Day broke my heart. Surely something legitimate has to change. Um, cheers, my brother. Good luck with the sky job. Thank you. Um, you make some great points, um, very good points. I think the biggest problem with regards to these deaths, I think, is the weight cutting. Um, these deaths aren't happening in the heavyweight division where there's no weight cutting. I think there's a huge, huge problem with weight cutting that no one seems to be talking about. Um, fighters are killing themselves, literally killing themselves to make weight. And that's the biggest problem. And no one is checking on how they're making weight. No independent body checking on how they're making weight. It's just a case of things like 30 day weigh in. Have you made the weight that you're supposed to be made yet? How did you make it? We don't care. Um, things need to be dealt with. So weight cutting needs to be checked properly. Uh, the UFC um, are getting a bit serious with this as well now because of it, because it's just silly. That's where the problem lies. Obviously, there are more reasons, but I think a big problem is weight cutting. Huge problem. Connor DeQuan says, what do you think of your Dines Ugas and his chances against the top welterweights? I believe he really has a good chance at beating all the top welterweights. And I also think that he beat Porter and was very hard done by um, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. He's definitely, if you think of sort of the top four or five guys, or maybe even top six, um, if you count Danny Garcia within that, he's definitely the next, right? Uh, I think he probably could beat a Danny Garcia. Um, and I think because of the way um, Sean Porter performed against Errol Spence, I think Ugas's stock has actually risen in that. So um, he's definitely a top talent. Um, he might have to work his way up to a mandatory spot because I don't think anyone's going to fight him on a voluntary not after how we fought against Porter. So good talent. Will he get the chances? Um, we'll see, right? Um, Hanan Malik says, do you think that Ronaldo genuinely believes he deserves the Ballon d'Or this year, even though his stats were nowhere near Messi's? The whole world knows Juventus always win the Serie A, but does he know that because he seems to think he always deserves it with a few good performance in the season, like against Atletico? I'm a Ronaldo fan, by the way. Are you? Um... The Ballon d'Or isn't just about what you do for your club, country as well, right? I mean, he done well with Portugal, didn't they win the Nations League? Um, he's now got 700 career goals. I know that doesn't count in terms of a whole package. Um, personally, I think Van Dijk should win it. I'm just saying that as a Liverpool fan. I think Van Dijk should win it. I think um, the way he's transformed our defence is just incredible. Trust me, incredible. But Messi's stats are just scary. I want to see Messi do it somewhere else. That's my only gripe with Messi right now. And that's, it's not even fair, but can you go to another country and do exactly what you're doing? I think he can, but 
let's see it, right? At least with Ronaldo now, we've seen it in at least three. I don't know if you count what he done in Portugal, but at least three in terms of Premier League, La Liga, and now the Serie A. He's done it everywhere. Uh, Jose um, Fim de Liv says, what's your view on the biased commentary on the Fitzgerald versus Cheeseman fight? Very biased. Very, very biased. I don't know why. Um, and why is Eddie Hearn so obsessed with giving Fowler and Cheeseman rematches against Fitzgerald? If Fowler beat Fitzgerald, he wouldn't be calling for a rematch. Don't get it either. I look at Scott Fitzgerald, sorry, Scott Fitzgerald, and I think, give him a push and give him some promotion and you've got something there. He's a character. He's a fantastic character. That thing he did in the lead up to Fowler where he took his top off and said something like, does it look like I'm struggling to make weight? Do you know how many people copied that? He's a character. Um, I don't understand why they're not giving him promotion. I really don't. I mean, does he not sell enough tickets? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, Fowler has no character, nor does Cheeseman. Dead. Boring. Um, so I, I don't get it. Uh, John99 says, Kylian Mbappe is a world-class 20-year-old footballer, and a lot of people think he will reach the heights of Ronaldo and Messi, who were, are the top two best footballers in the world. Would you say Devin Haney is like the Mbappe of boxing? No, not yet. Not yet. You know how many prospects? Are you, I mean, John, I'm sure you've seen as well in boxing. You know how many prospects look fantastic at this level? And I mean this level in terms of um, the level before world level. It's so a fringe world level. And then they step up just a couple of steps and they don't look as good. I need to see him fight someone of note. Um... Not Abdullayev, not someone of note, and then I will make my judgment. I've been burnt too many times to be calling him the killing Mbappe of boxing. Um, Sonny Singh says, what are the two, three best books you've read? I'm looking over there because that's my bookshelf. Um, Dan Brown, Angels and Demons. Fucking hell, what a book that was. I might read that again. Um, might read that again. That was fucking great. Um, I've got every single book by a guy called Lee Child. Yeah, Lee Child's character in the novels are a guy called Jack Reacher. Um, Tom Cruise was the guy in the film. And I'm going to pick um, a autobiography, Stokely Carmichael, um, a civil rights guy in the 60s and 70s. I got his book as well, which was fantastic. Um, uh, Ty ZHD says, well, the WBC's latest action, franchise champion, White's mandatory situation, do you think Dana White's approach with not acknowledging the belts will be successful? Not sure. I think the only way it's successful is if he pays a bucket load of money. That's what fighters want. Fighters don't give a shit about belts. At me, they don't. All they want is the money. What normally used to happen is belts equaled money. That's not how it works anymore. Fighters want that. Um, if Dana White can come in and almost do what um, DAZN did and chuck a lot of money at people, then maybe. If not, He's going to struggle. He's going to struggle because he doesn't pay people in the UFC. I say he. The organization doesn't, so we'll see. Uh, Lee says, top five greatest Premier League strikers. Impossible question. I could name 50. Um, top five is going to be very hard for me. Fuck me. Top five. All right, let's go. Shearer. No order, by the way. And Ronaldo wasn't a striker at United, so he's not in it. Shearer. Henri. Drogba. Aguero, Rude Van Nistelrooy. I know I've missed that. Someone obvious. I've got to go more. I've got to go ten. I've got to go ten. Burkamp, Ian Wright, Suarez, Wayne Rooney, Torres. Got to get two Liverpool. Fowler. Did I say Fowler? Have I said Fowler? If I haven't said Fowler, Fowler's got to be Fowler top five for me. So let's start. Fuck it. Anyway, you know what I did. Um, Malta Zlock says, Ade, why do you think there are no British boxers in the pound for pound rankings? What do you think needs to be done to improve on that? And do we need new organisations or bodies in the UK to oversee such potential and create more world champions? Or is the boxing business too corrupt to change? Um, maybe we do need another. I mean, I know there's British boxing border control. Is there an English Boxing border control? Or is it broken down like that or is it just British? I don't know. But um, yeah, I think you asked, you answered it yourself in terms of corruption. But um, what do you think needs to be done to get British boxers in the pound for pound? I think we've got a few guys that might be close. 
Um, Josh Warrington can't be too far out of the top 25, 30, nor can Billy Joe Saunders. Same as Callum Smith. These guys might be touching top 30. Sometimes it's just a case of the guys above them are just that good. Guys above them are just that good. I mean, that top 10, for example, is stacked. Stacked with talent. Like, scary talent. So, um, there's no shame not being in that. Um, no shame at all. Ibrahim A says, question. Do you think AJ has had a mixed career? 2013 to 2016, where he dominated. And then post Klitschko, where he's had the wrong fights to develop as a fighter. Um, Takam and Povetkin in brackets. Um, those were both classes mandatory, so there's not much you can do about it. Even though Takim came in as a late replacement, the IBF actually pushed him up. So it was classed as a mandatory. So there's not much you can do about his mandatories. Um, let me read your second question, actually. How does AJ become a complete fighter within the next two years? He doesn't. He doesn't become a complete fighter. Um, not everyone can become a complete fighter. Um, just how it is, right? It's just how it is. AJ is not going to be able to move like Tyson Fury and get the lateral movement like Tyson Fury. He's not going to be able to do that. Likewise, Tyson Fury is not going to be able to create the punch power of AJ, right? I mean, if you're a fighter that has all of those things, all of those things I just mentioned, you will go down as one of the greatest fighters of all time. AJ isn't going to do that. I mean, all he can do is work on things uh, that he should have. Good jab. That's it. Work on a bit of head movement. Those. That's it. In terms of him almost adding to his arsenal things that will make him a complete fighter, it's just not going to happen. And that's not just AJ, that's every sport, right? I mean, Roger Federer um, sliced backhand isn't as good as Rafa Nadal sliced backhand. Do you know what I mean? You can't have everything. Y you can't. You've just got to work on what you've got. And AJ needs to work on what he's got. He's got a good jab, needs to turn that good jab into a better jab. Simple, I think. Um, Lincoln Coventry says... Um, hey, Ade, why is it that when the media or fans talk about drug cheats, it's always the same names that come up like Canelo, Ortiz and Povetkin, etc. Why are guys like Fury, Billy Joe, uh, especially Fury, never brought up that often? I agree. I bloody agree. Um, I personally feel with no proof, of course, that Team Fury is running and milking this so-called mental health condition. <laughs> That's cheeky. <laughs> I shouldn't even be laughing to the max, partly to avoid the skeletons in Fury's career and to give him a pass on fighting opponents he should not be fighting at this stage of his career. It's uh, it's like the so-called mental health story is always being shoved down our throats. That's cheeky, Lincoln. That's cheeky. I will agree with you, though, on the part of um, that we just seem to almost forget that Fury and Billy Joe Saunders have both failed drug tests. Fury got banned. Billy Joe Saunders was supposed to fight Dimitri Sandrade. Fucked up. No one's talking about it. We're all hypocrites to this sport. I tell you now, hypocrites. Uh, Stephen Blakely says, Hey, Eddie, who you got in a clash of murderous power punches between GGG and Joe McClellan and why? Good question. If you were to ask me this question three years ago, I'd have said GGG all day. Um, just because his power looks scary. But you have to be honest. Once he stepped up to the elite level, and let's look at those elite level fighters he's fought, Canelo, Jacobs, Derevchenko, what's the same thing that makes them all stand out? It's gone to points of all of them. Yes, he's hurt Jacob and Derevchenko. They both went down, but it's always gone to points. It's like his power at the very elite level, the top level, isn't the same. Joe McClellan did hurt a few people at the elite level. GGD hasn't. So I'm going to go uh, McClellan. Um, good question, though, dude. 786 Naf says, hey, Eddie, it's Hasnaf here. Is it time to boycott the WBC after the joke announcement about franchise champions? Is it time journalists like yourselves and fans do something about it, like sign a petition? There's nothing we can do about it. It's up to boxers to, to make the change. We as fans can't do much. Um, I do think we are getting to a stage now, though, where belts, sorry, belts don't mean much as they used to, right? So it's getting to the point where they're weakening their own belts. So I don't know, maybe they're killing themselves. Um, it's Van Grob says, um, Istvan Grob, sorry, says, lovely content, Addy. Dina really became a star uh, this year in Doha. Do you think she can win an Olympic gold in the 200? Not the 100, although I expect her to get a medal, but the 200 is going to be hers. What do you think? I don't think she's going to do it in the 200. The reason why, um, she was only favourite for the 200 because I can't remember the lady's name in the 400 who got the silver medal. Um, she didn't run the two. 
And that girl has beaten her, I think, three times this year. Um, that girl will beat her in the 200. She, she, she would. What's her name? I can't remember her name, but if you go back and look at the 400 metre final, uh, not the girl that won um, from Bahrain, the girl that came second. She's beaten Dina Asher-Smith, I think, two or three times this year in 200. Her stride, she's like six foot two. Her stride is just too big. So, um, no. G-Man Box and says, Addy, when is the last time Liverpool beat United at Old Trafford? I know, it's not great, is it? I think um, the last time when it was 3-0, I think, was it 3-0? Suarez scored outside of his foot. Remember that? Boom. Um, which fighters does Sky have up and coming who could be a star? Seem Josh Kelly has been given the cold shoulder since the draw. I'm hearing rumours about Josh Kelly just disappearing, but we'll see. Um, they have the star. Don't know. Don't know. Um, don't really don't know. Struggling, aren't they? <laughs> struggling. They're struggling in terms of a star anyway, um, which is probably why he's more focused on the American fighters right now, right? Um, maybe so. Um, all right, last couple. It's been a long one. Uh, Lampoost Jackson says, Eddie, keep it up. Loving the content. I'm an amateur boxer looking to turn pro in the next few years. Good luck, bro. And I currently weigh just over the heavyweight limit. But that's only because I've been going to the gym and lifting. Sometimes it slows me down. Sometimes it doesn't. My natural weight before I engaged muscle was 160 pounds. Do you think I should stay at the heavyweight limit? Bearing in mind, I'm only 5 foot 11. I have the power to compete at heavyweight, but I'm not sure what the best option is. What would you do in my situation? Uh, lose the muscle lose the muscle it just doesn't help anything apart from looking good and lifting weights doesn't do anything for a boxing career uh it's just extra baggage and extra weight you do not need five foot eleven you really should want super middle i mean super middle carl frotch i know it's all different but carl frotch six one you know what i mean uh, super middle mate uh lose the muscle lose the muscle and good luck if you are going to turn pro honestly good luck dude it's a it's a tough tough sport so uh more power to you all right, last couple of questions, people. Uh, original Individual says, what do you think is more important to promoters, a fighter's marketability or talent? Mm, good question. Also, you did read my last question out, but you never answered it. What would be a bigger loss to UK boxing, Huey Fury retiring or Ty and Booth coming off YouTube? <laughs> Why do you think I didn't answer it? Dude? <laughs> Although, sorry, T and Booth, I think his YouTube is fucking amazing. So I'm going to say the bigger loss would be T and Booth coming off YouTube. Um, regarding the first question, it's marketability, isn't it? Let's be honest, it is. It really is, isn't it? It really is. Um, look, Ryan Gar I bet you any money, Ryan Garcia is on more money than some legit world champions, like highly ranked legit world champions out there. Bet he is, just because he has that marketability. Rampage Ryan says Michael Conlon versus Josh Warrington. Um, at this stage, um, Josh Warrington, I'm not on the Conlon hype, not on it at all. All right, guys, I don't even know how long that is. Um, I think it's over an hour. Um, apologies if your question hasn't been answered. I did try and answer as many as possible. I'm actually filming this. It's like two in the morning. I'm trying, people. I'm trying. Peace.